how is everyone before i kick off good yep awesome cool so yeah like i said it's great to see you all in real life it's awesome uh my name is wolf leader i'm a customer engineer working in the fast track for azure team based in auckland but i work with customers in new zealand all across asia helping them to build apps in azure and today we're going to be talking about developing and deploying microservices using Azure Container Apps. Now, before I kind of kick into it, how many of you are deploying applications on Kubernetes? It doesn't have to be Azure, it can be AWS. If you're not in? Bit quiet. OK. Jordy, Jordy is the mic. Yeah, that's why I asked like five minutes. But it's OK. <laughs> I'll keep going and then, yeah. Um, who here is like, developing on Kubernetes? One person, a couple of people. Cool. Dan as well. Hey, Dan. Um, any experience with Kubernetes? I would containers. It doesn't have to be Kubernetes, just playing around with Docker. Awesome. So, ooh, this um, who has no idea what containers are? Cool. Awesome. That's going to be where. Just clip myself in. These are always fiddly. I can never really do them. Because if I do it like that, that's going to be weird, right? <laughs> no, well, it'll be fine. OK. Cool. So we're consistently seeing customers come to us and say, We've got this really cool project, and we want to deploy on Kubernetes, which is great. And we hear, well, we ask them, like, OK, cool. Um, when do you need to like, get this into production? Like, oh, about a month or so. It's like, fantastic. How much experience do you have with Kubernetes? None. And <laughs> the, re the reason why that's a bad thing is we're constantly seeing Kubernetes, uh, the complexity behind Kubernetes, as a blocker for customers adopting it and using it in production. <laughs> So essentially what Azure Container Apps is, it's built on the foundation of open source technology, such as Azure Kubernetes Service. Do you need water? Are you okay? <laughs> okay, cool, awesome. Um, um, to help deliver the same microservices benefits. Are you gonna hook stuff for me? Cool. Thank you. Um, essentially using a fully managed <laughs> and <laughs> serverless app hosting option. Sorry, do I need to start talking? No, you don't. Um, you can see I know what I'm doing. Hey, welcome to Microsoft. We can fit audio stuff to people. This is the only time that Teams has been easier. Yeah. <laughs> Switch you out because this is what it is. I'm just going to stick my arms out like this. You know? <laughs> Not awkward at all. Don't touch my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should check that out. Hello? 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 You can't hear you. I can't. Sure. I mean, I can hear myself, but that one doesn't work. <laughs> this is great on the stream as well. There we go. Just, uh, just vamp for time. Are you all like in the new space? Good. Have you tried the um, like the interactive wall at the front? Can you put that in your pocket? We can. Is that my? Oh yeah. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Cool. So I'll start again. So essentially, Kubernetes and the complexity behind Kubernetes is a blocker. Um, a lot of customers want to deploy in Kubernetes, but they don't know how to manage it, which is um, a big issue because essentially, as developers, we want to build features that drive business values rather than trying to waste time figuring out how complex technology works when it should be simpler. What Azure Container Apps is, it's built on the foundation of these open source technologies that help deliver the same microservices capabilities and benefits uh, without having to deal with the complexities of uh, or container orchestration service like Kubernetes. Now, behind the scenes, Azure Container Apps runs on Azure Kubernetes service. Uh, it's powered by Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling. Um, it can integrate well with the distributed application runtime or the DAPA framework. Um, and it's also integrated with Envoy uh, for the um, domain name service and service discovery. However, essentially, with the um, abstraction of Kubernetes, you're not exposed directly to the underlying Kubernetes infrastructure. Um, so essentially, what Azure Container Apps is, it provides you that benefit of um, having your microservices platform without having to deal with Kubernetes. And this is different to a lot of container technologies that we or um, container platforms that we already provide on Azure. So some of you may have uh, worked with Azure Container Instances in the past, 
where you essentially you've just got a single pod of a Hyper-E Hyper-V isolated container, which you can just um, burst out to on demand. Um, we also have Azure Kubernetes service as well. Um, and this provides direct access to the Kubernetes API and runs um, any Kubernetes workload. Uh, the full cluster resides in your subscription. You're managing, uh, you're responsible for managing it and configuring the cluster. We also have functions as well. So that's uh, functions as a service solution. And this is optimized for event-driven um, applications using the functions um, programming model, um, whereas container apps is platform, um, sorry, yeah, platform agnostic. Uh, Azure Functions is tied deeply with the, the runtime and the functions SDK. And there's also so, um, options to deploy Azure Web Apps. If you're running containers, uh, sorry, websites and some containers, you can deploy them to Azure Web Apps. So essentially, Container Apps is the only serverless uh, solution offering a combination of built-in HTTP-based auto-scaling capabilities and event-driven auto-scaling um, capabilities that you can use to run containers that may be processing messages from queues, streams, or databases. You can run containers and scale them in response to HTTP traffic or events, that, or any kind of scaler that's supported by Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling. Essentially, you can scale to zero and only really pay for what you use um, by the second. Because you're not burdened by managing any container orchestration, this kind of removes the, the need to manage those complex or container orchestration systems and gives you enables you to have more focus on building your applications. Um, you can build microservices, event-driven uh, processing workers, um, APIs and background jobs using containers and uh, using any programming language or framework that you like. Uh, so unlike functions where you're limited to the functions programming model and also um, a limited amount of uh, languages that you can use to develop Azure functions, um, any programming language that you want to develop in and deploy as a container, you can use Azure Container Labs. And there's also integration with the Distributed Application Runtime, or DAPA framework, um, which is a really cool framework for simplifying common tasks such as PubSub, processing, service invocation, and more. As I mentioned earlier, it's built on top of um, open source technology. So it's built on top of Azure Kubernetes Service, Kada, DAPA, and Envoy. Uh, you can perform modern application lifecycle tasks, such as application upgrades, shifting traffic between different containers, versioning with fairly straightforward configurations. Um, and you can rely on built-in service discovery for microservices communication, fully managed HTTP and HTTP2 uh, ingress endpoints based on Envoy, integrated load balancing, logging, and monitoring capabilities. And this opens up a number of scenarios and a number of, number of applications that we can build using Azure Container Apps. So like I mentioned earlier, we can build a microservices um, application integrated with Dapper if we choose to use Dapper as the framework. Um, we can build event-driven processing applications. So say we have applications that are reading messages from the queue and process them as they arrive in the queue. And we can actually scale based on how many messages are incoming into the queue. We can host our web applications on it using custom domains, TLS certificates, and integrated authentication. We can have public endpoints. And I'll show you a little bit later how we can actually shift HTTP requests between different versions of our application. Um, which opens up some really cool scenarios for blue-green deployments and um, A-B testing. And we can also do some background processing applications as well. So a lot of uh, engineers that I work with have opted to go down the functions um, path for background processing, which is not entirely the use case for Azure Functions. Uh, but now Azure Container Apps can do this for us, which is pretty cool. Cool. So before I dive a little bit deeper into what Azure Container Apps is and what it's made up with. Has anyone got any questions? I get some water. Awesome. Cool. That's me. Cool. So I'll go through some concepts of uh, how container apps are formed and, and what they're, they're, they're kind of made up from. So individual container apps are essentially deployed to a single container apps environment. And this acts as a secure boundary around our container apps. Now, container apps that are deployed to the same environment essentially share the same virtual network and write logs to the same log analytics workspace. So for those of you who are writing logs to log analytics, you can essentially configure your environments to send logs to that workspace. At the moment, blob storage and streaming to event hubs isn't supported. So for some resources, you can send metrics and logs um, to either blob storage or via event hubs. Um, that's not supported currently at the moment. I don't have a timeline when that will be. 
Um, when you provision a container app environment, essentially the VNet acts as the boundary around it. And there are two options. You can have your, you can just provision a container app environment, and essentially a VNet is deployed um, within Microsoft's um, tenant, or you can bring your own VNet as a custom VNet, or pre-existing VNet, sorry, um, to act, um, or to kind of host your container app environment, um, which sits in your subscription. Now, essentially, the reason why you want to kind of deploy your container apps to the same environment, if you have uh, related services that you need to manage, you're deploying uh, different applications to the same VNet, if they're communicating to each other via Dapper, they have the same Dapper configuration, or they need to share the same log analytics workspace, this is when we'd actually deploy our container apps to the same container app environment. Um, but you can have multiple container app environments and deploy applications to different um, to different environments if they don't need to share the same res uh, compute resources and they don't need to communicate to each other via Dapper. So you're not limited to a single container app environment. You could have multiple uh, different container app environments and deploy your container apps depending on what your use case is. Oh. And then sitting within um, in our container app environments are our containers. Now, essentially, container apps manages the details um, and orchestration, uh, Kubernetes orchestration for you. Uh, they can use any runtime, programming language, and development stack of your choice. Uh, they support Linux-based container images, so there's not support for any Windows um, Windows containers at the moment, um, and I'm not sure if, if there ever will be. Um, you can pull use containers from any public or private registry, um, but you can't run privileged containers that requires root access. You don't have to provide a base container image as well, um, and it, I'll show you a little bit later on. I've got some bicep code there, how we can actually um, deploy revisions and update revisions and how that actually works um, with containers. You can also define multiple containers um, in a single container app, and these are all known as pods. The containers in the, the pods will essentially share the same hard disk and uh, network resources and experience the same application lifecycle. Cool. Now, there's this idea of revisions in container apps, and they are immutable versions and snapshots uh, of your container app. So essentially, when you create a container app for the first time, your first revision is created. And new revisions are automatically created when a, the container app's uh, template configuration is updated. And this is what we refer to as a revision scope change. Now, revisions are uh, immutable. Um, but they're also affected by kind of global uh, configuration changes, so like uh, secrets, for example, uh, which will apply to all of your revisions. And this is what's referred to as an application scope changes. Now, revisions are most useful when you enable ingress um, to make your container app accessible by HTTP. So this is really handy for those A-B testing and blue-green deployment scenarios where you might be uh, developing new features for a website, for example, and you want to redirect traffic to, um, let's say, 20% of your traffic um, to, for users to go and access that particular feature. Another really cool thing you can do, you can tie this in with um, Azure app configuration and essentially use feature flags and direct traffic that way as well. Um, so there's a couple of cool things that you can do uh, with revisions. Currently, at the moment, you can retain up to 100 revisions within your container app, um, but you can also run multiple revisions concurrently. And I'll show you how we can actually configure that in Bicep later on. Now, container apps allows you to expose your container app to the public um, internet via, uh, by enabling ingress. When you enable ingress, you don't need to create any Azure resources like a load balancer or public IP address or any other um, Azure resource to enable incoming HTTP requests. Uh, and with that enabled, you get, there's support for TLS um, termination, support for HTTP and HTTPS, um, and the endpoints always expose ports 80 for HTTP and 443 for HTTPS. Um, your ingress IP and fully qualified domain name can be either visibly external to the internet or internally within a VNet. And with ingress enabled, your application is really assigned a fully qualified domain name that can be accessed. Uh, your container apps environment will have a single IP address for applications uh, for external visibility and an internal IP address for internal um, visibility. So all, oh, sorry. So all applications within your container app environment will um, yeah, share that single um, public IP address. Um, 
and HTTP traffic is routed to those individual applications based on the fully quite qualified domain name. There's also support for logging as well. So it gathers a broad set of data about your container app and sends it to log analytics. Um, you can use tools like the Azure CLI or the Azure portal to run queries against your log analytics workspace and kind of just run some queries against what's going on, um, against your logs that your containers are producing, set up um, Azure alerts um, um, based off those logs as well. Um, there's also support for metrics, so you can see your CPU, memory, bytes in, outs, and requests, stuff like that. You can connect to the co uh, console of your container apps and run shell commands within that. Um, and there's also events that are emitted from the underlying orchestrator as well. So the container start failure, scale up, scale down, stuff like that. Cool. So now we're going to kick off into a demo. So essentially for this demo, I've got an application that stores information about books. We have three container apps within a container app environment. Uh, two of them are just essentially APIs that aren't accessible via the public internet. So we've disabled ingress on, or um, we've marked as internal ingress only, sorry. And then we have a front-end application that can be accessed by internet traffic, uh, which in turn makes outbound calls to our APIs uh, that are hosted within the container app environment. For the infrastructure, I've created all resources in BICEP, which includes the environment, container apps, along with an Azure Container Registry, which I'm going to pull my images from. Uh, and then I've also used uh, GitHub Actions for my container apps and infrastructure deploys. So let's get out our PowerPoint. Cool. So dive into the BICEP code first. So essentially, with location, Azure, for those of you who might not have played around with Azure Container Apps in the portal, there's only a certain amount of regions um, that Container Apps is currently available in, because Container Apps supports availability zones by default. Uh, more regions are incoming. How many of you are deploying to both, just out of interest, Australia East and Southeast? Just, I know you, yeah, no? One? Yeah. So currently at the moment, it's only Australia East, because there's no availability zones in Southeast. Um, so in terms of disaster recovery, you've kind of got two options. There's a manual option, which isn't great, which sucks. Um, essentially, if a region goes down, you essentially have to manually deploy all your resources to another region that supports availability zone. The kind of cooler and better way of doing it is you deploy to two regions with availability zones, and you can use something like Azure Front Door or Traffic Manager to redirect your traffic um, to your primary region. If that region goes down, then tr uh, Front Door can actually reroute the traffic to the secondary region, which is the better way of doing it. Cool, so I've got my container registry here. I've added um, or enabled a system assigned identity. Um, Azure Container App supports managed identities, and we'll be using that to pull our images from. I've also got a log analytics workspace, which I'll be sending my logs to. Um, and then we get to, oh yeah, I've also got an application insights instance. So there isn't built-in support for application insights uh, for, your Azure, for Azure Container Apps, but what we can do is actually instrument our code so we can put in a connection string or an instrumentation key and send logs to application insights that way. Um, and then I've got my um, container app environment here. So all I'm doing here is just really configuring the logs of my um, apps to send to log analytics. But here we can also set up um, our custom VNet. So if we're deploying to our own VNet, we can actually configure our VNet within our environment here. And if you're using Dapper, you can also um, as configure this to send Dapper uh, logs um, from your container app environment. And then we get to our container app itself. So here I'm just saying, OK, deploy this uh, container app to this environment. We can set um, our revision mode. So essentially, with container apps, we can have a single revision active um, only. So we only have one revision active all the time or we can enable multiple revisions. So we might have different um, revisions with different functionality, and we can set that up as multiple to redirect traffic to different revisions. We can also set up secrets. I'm not using secrets in this application, but essentially what in Azure Container Apps Secrets uses um, yeah, Kubernetes secrets, not um, Azure Key Vault. That is coming. Uh, but here's where you can put connection strings, stuff like that. And then, yeah, I'm configuring uh, the registries that this container app is going to be using. So I'm using my system assigned identity to connect to my container registry that I've provisioned before. On Ingress, I've set the external to false, so I'm limiting traffic um, 
to only accept requests from inside my container app environment. And I'll show you how that works in a bit. And then I'm setting up my container. So here I've got my uh, book API image that I'm going to be pulling in. And I'm setting up some environment variables here. Um, and within my containers, I can also set up probes as well. So there's support for liveness probes, uh, startup probes, and readiness probes that we can configure for our containers. And then I'm defining a scale rule here. So like I said, you can scale up your container apps using any supported CADA scaler. Here, I'm just using an HTTP rule. So for every 100 concurrent requests, I'm going to scale up by an instance. And we can scale from, uh, this can be 0 right up to 30. But here, it's 1 to 10. Now, the thing about this, uh, for max replicas, it's um, not always guaranteed. It's more of a desired state rather than a guarantee. Um, so even though you put 30, it might not go up to 30. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. And again, I'm enabling a system assigned identity for that. And then just to show you kind of the difference, all I'm really doing here for my um, container app that's going to host my uh, website, I've got external ingress enabled. So this will be accessible by the public internet. Cool. And then I've just assigned some um, role assignments here that will allow those container apps to pull images from my container registry. Now, I've provisioned all my stuff before, so I'm not going to make you sit there and watch, <laughs> watch um, Azure being deployed. But essentially, if I go back, I've got essentially defining my containers being deployed via GitHub Actions. How many of you use GitHub Actions? A couple of you. Um, more Azure DevOps as well. Essentially, you can do the same thing. So it's not limited to just GitHub Actions. There's a lot more documentation around GitHub Actions compared to DevOps, but you can essentially use DevOps as well. Cool. Um, awesome. So this is my resource group with all of my container apps. So if I go into the Books API, this is um, my, the ingresses, um, external ingresses disabled. So you see, I've got this application URL here. So books API dot internal, marking it as an internal um, application. If I try to access that now, it's going to say it can't be found. So requests coming from outside of your container app environment are going to be unsuccessful. If I go to the actual website, which is here, click on that, there's my website. So essentially, real basic website, essentially just getting a list of items uh, within a um, book uh, within um, two, well, from two APIs. But essentially, these two APIs can't be accessed from outside of uh, my container apps environment. But since um, my web application is hosted inside my container app environment, it can make those outbound calls to those APIs. Awesome. Does that make sense? Fantastic. So going back, what I'm going to do is now I've got this URL. I'm just going to run a quick load test using Azure Load Test. And remember, I defined a scaling rule that for every 100 um, concurrent um, users or current HTTP requests, I'm going to scale up by an instance. So I'm just going to run that in the background. It's successfully created. Just let that do its thing. And there's also other support for other things as well. So we can enable authentication. So say if I want to make users log into my website using Facebook, uh, GitHub, Microsoft, Azure AD, I can enable um, authentication in my um, Azure Container App. Um, I've also set up secrets. Again, again, I'm not using any secrets. But any secrets that are defined here, we can use within our application. And we can also use that within our scale rules as well. So if you're, um, for example, if you're scaling based on messages coming into Azure Service Bus, you can you define your namespace secret within here, and then configure that within your bicep code to actually call that secret when you're scaling um, up on messages. It's also uh, support for ingress as well. So I've enabled HTTP ingress there and accepting traffic from anywhere from my internal applications. It would say limited to the container apps environment. We could also sort of support for custom domains, Dapper. Now, here's the revision management. So essentially, with revision management, that's provision. That's awesome. Anyway, um, essentially, here we can actually define how much traffic we're going to direct to particular revisions. So if I open up this one, this one has a particular revision URL. So each revision will have its own kind of URL, have, and that's where it will direct traffic to. So here I can put 80, um, that's, yeah, 80% for this revision, then 20% for this revision, and do some A B testing that way. 
You can also add labels to this as well, which will help um, with those um, blue-green deployment scenarios and maybe testing scenarios if you're running those um, as part of your CI CD. Go through to containers as well. So here you can see which revisions going to be um, revisions currently being using. Um, any resource allocation, environment variables defined for that container and health probes. So again, the support for liveness, readiness, and startup probes. And then scale, I've got scale. Um, here I can see my scaling rules. So here's my HTTP rule. So essentially for any concurrent, for 100 concurrent requests, I'm gonna scale up by an instance. So if I go into my metrics here, I should be able to see, I ran this a couple of times before. So yeah, I ran a couple of load tests at one o'clock and just 20 past two. So every time there's load tests, we can see those replica counts have increased. And here we can also view any logs coming from our containers. So you can see logs cancel being emitted from my container out here. So if you configure logs with inside your containers, you can write them out to standard out or standard error if anything's going wrong with your containers. Cool, awesome. So, thank you all for listening. Uh, that was very quick, very lightning round kind of stuff. Um, if you want to try container apps, there's a link akms.ns forward slash container apps. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask.